Well, we did ask the Pakistani High Commission for a statement, but thus far we've had no response. Now, let's talk about the role of government in helping businesses deal with the recession. With unprecedented state intervention in the banking sector and widespread calls for loans and subsidies for various other industries, we heard calls just a few moments ago on this programme from Ken Clark. The question is, how can governments best encourage businesses to grow and thrive in these challenging times? Well, Dennis Campbell will be delivering a speech on this very issue to the Wales North American Business Council tomorrow night. Vaughan Gethin is the president of the Wales TUC. Gentlemen, welcome to the programme. Thank you. Dennis, what are you going to be saying tonight? Well, uh, tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> to tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, some of the issues of trying to attract inbound foreign investment into Wales, into the United Kingdom in general. And one of the issues that I see here as a, as a resident of Wales for almost six years is that government has taken almost a complete control of economic development. And for economic development to work, it really needs to be a public-private partnership. And I've worked on several of those in the past, one of the most famous ones being, of course, Miami's Beacon Council, which took a city that was literally torn apart by racial riots and strife and all sorts of other issues, and developed and redeveloped uh, Miami Beach, the whole downtown sector, had a real cognitive and, and very cohesive plan for what they were going to do step by step. And they did it in concert with the business people, with the business people mostly taking the lead because they're the ones that can move at the speed of business. Government tends to move a little bit too slowly, particularly if you send an email that says, we'll get back to you in seven working days. Um, I'm working with a, a, a gentleman over in Bridge End that's doing um, some work for a group that is trying to increase the speed because the 15 minutes that it takes for the ticker to update with financial data is too long in this market. Vaughan, what are your thoughts on, on that as a thesis, that uh, government should really take a step back and allow business to lead in, in some of these issues? Well, we continue to think that there is a role for active government in economic development. Being involved in the economic summit process, it's been interesting to see that there has been a rather more genuine interrelationship between the government, the business sector, the public sector and trade unions as well. But we believe that that shouldn't just be a model for crisis times, it should be a model for ordinary times about setting out agreed objectives and actually seeing those achieved. One of the things we've been happy with is actually that decisions have been made that should make a difference. We do sometimes have concerns about the pace of government, but we continue to believe there must be a role for active government in planning for the future needs of the economy. An example is the just transition from the current economy of today with carbon-related um, fuels uh, to, a, to a new economy with more green jobs in them. Well, we think the government has to have a role in that to make sure that there is a strategy that, that, that makes sense for all of us and that jobs for future workers are actually created at a pace that makes sense. Dennis, there is a... What's happened recently, the, 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 the credit crunch, the collapse of banking systems around the world, the idea that business knows best has taken a hell of a battering in recent times. Oh, it absolutely has, and in many cases deservedly so. Um, you know, we've had a lot of irresponsible bankers and a lot of irresponsible company owners in the automotive sector in the United States, uh, uh, for example, and I think they're getting their just desserts right now. That does not mean that business cannot take a very strong and proactive role. Um, th one of the big things that always has bothered me is the need for what I call a with him, a what's in it for me sort of mentality that exists in a lot of places. And you really need to adopt, a, you know, what's in it for Wales? What, what is going to benefit and help to grow the infrastructure, the education system, et cetera? And that's inbound capital investment from these companies because these companies are going to demand that you have an up-to-date workforce and make sure that those pieces are in place so that indeed people can get the training that they need and can move forward. Uh, Vaughan, in, in terms of special projects, if you like, you've made the point that government should lead on that, mm. uh, environmental change, mm. for example. But what about day-to-day -day business? What about day-to-day -day attraction of investment? Do you accept that government should take the, the, the passenger seat in that respect? Well, what's interesting about what Dennis has just said is when talking about infrastructure, when talking about educational achievement and skills, well, of course, government has to be involved in all of those things, in helping to create that infrastructure, in helping to decide how and where that infrastructure goes, whether it's the, the transport network, whether it's um, broadband access. Well, there must be a role for government there because the private sector can't and won't do it just on its own. And certainly in terms of future skills planning, well, again, there must be a role for government in terms of the, the maintained education sector and also further and higher education as well. So I certainly don't think this is any suggestion that active government must suddenly um, step back once the current difficulties are over. There certainly must be a role for active government now and in the future. Dennis? 
Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the key word in there is that it's a public-private partnership. And when we were working, and I have to go back to the example in Miami and the same in Boston as well, two major metropolitan cities that went through an active redevelopment process, it is the public part, the, the public-private, excuse me, partnership that made it work because you need to be able to move quickly, you need to be able to have a level of salesmanship and an ability to have a discussion on some of these key issues with corporate executives, and you also need to be able to have the government taxing authorities there to help in areas where there's also needed. Vaughan, the, the two of you seem to agree on, on the idea that uh, government and business need to work closely together. Do you accept that perhaps the difference you have is, is simply one of how much emphasis should be placed on one or the other, or is it more profound than that? Well, I think it, it, some of it is about the detail of what you mean by public-private partnership. That can mean very different things to people in trade unions who often that's just a subtext for letting the private sector run public services, which clearly we'd have a difference with. Uh, but when you're talking about how you look at future needs for the economy and how you plan for that, then yes, we do believe that public and private should be sat down together in planning for the future of all, all of our... All right. Gentlemen, I'm grateful to you both for talking to us this afternoon. Thank you very much indeed. That's it from me this week. Don't forget, Adrian Masters is back with Dragon's Eye on Thursday from me. Goodbye. <laughs>